Hi guys, my name's Danny. I'm from Gateway Church uh, in Southampton. Thank you for asking me to share my thoughts on Psalm 41. Um, so this is obviously written by David, probably going through one of his um, more difficult times. Um, obviously we know that the Psalms are kind of very up and down in depending on really what David was going through at that time. Um, and this was one of the, the more difficult things that he was going through at the time. So what I'm going to do is read a few verses um, and then um, I'll just share my thoughts on it. Um, so, blessed by God's grace and compassion, this is the amplified version by the way. Um, blessed by God's grace and compassion is he who considers the helpless. The Lord will save him in the day of trouble. The Lord will protect him and keep him alive, and he will be called blessed in the land. You do, you do not hand him over to the desire of his enemies. The Lord will sustain and strengthen him on his sickbed. In his illness, you will restore him to health. I just want to go back to that, that simple word right in that first verse there. Um, blessed by God's grace and compassion is he who considers the helpless. Now, we could easily kind of... Um, overlook that word couldn't we consider um, what does that even mean um, well it says this in in Strong's dictionary it's a Hebrew word uh, called sawkal s-a-w-k-a-l um, and it means this to instruct to prosper to give good success to teach and understand giving wisdom and guidance wittingly isn't that incredible that that one word consider that we could quite easily easily overlook um, actually means a whole lot of things. It means to almost walk alongside those people that are, it says here, helpless, other versions say weak or poor. Those people that are less fortunate than us to actually walk alongside them, to, to help them, to teach them, to guide them, to give them good success. Isn't that incredible? I love that um, also in Isaiah it talks about us um, coming alongside and the thing that is our true fasting, talks about true fasting, is to you know, give strength to the humble and to walk alongside those that are struggling. Um, it's just an incredible word, that one word, sorkal, instruct, prosper, give good success. And then it goes on to list all those incredible things and how God wants to bless us, how God, not because we have done good, not because of our good deeds, but I think it's a heart, it's a heart um, reaction, isn't it, to those that are in need around us. When our heart, when we have God's heart and God's perspective on that situation and we sense God's um, feelings and, and heart towards that person, and we also see the potential within that person and we don't just maybe give them some money or, or give them a gift but actually it's more than that it's walking alongside them journeying with them our job isn't to judge is it our job isn't to even figure out if someone deserves something or not um, our job is to lift the fallen to restore the broken and to heal the hurting you know what all I've got to do is look back at my life and where I was at one stage um, and remember God's grace and compassion to me and I praise God that there wasn't people around me judging me at that time there wasn't people around me going oh well she's made a mistake um, she's got to deal with the consequences no there was people around me lifting me up give, give, offering me a hand of guidance um, and offering me wisdom and help at that time and you know you've only got to look back at your own life and see God's grace and compassion as he placed incredible people around you at certain times and we are to then called to be the same for others aren't we and then it goes on to say as for me I said oh Lord be gracious to me heal my soul for I have sinned against you my enemies speak evil of me, saying, when will he die and his name perish? And when, when one comes to see me, he speaks empty words, while his heart gathers malicious gossip against me. When he goes away, he tells me everywhere, uh, he tells it everywhere, 
All who hate me whisper together about me, against me. They are dividing my hurt, imagining the worst for me, saying a wicked thing is poured out upon him and holds him. And when he lies down, he will not rise up again. Even my own close friend in whom I trusted, whom I ate bread, has lifted, lifted his heel against me, betraying me. This is a tough one, isn't it? When you feel and sense that there are people around you um, against you. Um, it could be in your workplace, it could be in your family situation, it could be in friends or social situations. It's a really tough thing to go through. It could even be in your church situation. Um, and I'm sure we've all been through it because people are people. And um, I don't know about you, but I've met quite a few people over the years now. And I've realized that people come from all different types of perspectives on things. And what you may decide is a right choice for you. There'll be others around you that may not agree or may try and condemn or judge you for that. And it's never a nice thing um, going through that, feeling like people are against you. I think more than ever we're living in age, living in an age, dig digital age where there's social media uh, and there's, there's voices and platforms everywhere, everywhere we look. Um, all we've got to do is log on to Facebook or Instagram and someone's got an opinion about something. Um, and it's very easy to feel condemned. It's very easy to feel like there's people against you because there's just voices all around. You almost can't switch them off. <laughs> um, over the years, you know, we've, we've done life and we've made choices and we've done things that maybe other people have questioned and other people have, have you know, um, not agreed with. But at the end of the day, one of the things that we, one of the philosophies, I guess, that we adhere to continually is that we live our life out to the audience of one and one only. And that is God himself. Um, now, that's not taking you know people's wise counsel into consideration obviously you should do that <laughs> you definitely need to take wise counsel and that's biblical and that's right but at the end of the day if you have got a conviction that God is calling you into a direction that you know is right for your life into a into a situation that is right for your life then ultimately the bottom line is this you live your life out to the audience of one and one only um, you know and and it would be great to take people along with you when they hear your heart um, within that and, and they get a sense that actually God is calling you into that and maybe you'll change people's minds but whatever that looks like for you right now in your life remember that you're you're accountable to one yes it's good to have accountability with our fellow Christian you know brothers and sisters absolutely it is I'm not saying that, but when David was in this scenario where everyone was against him, that he couldn't find one person, even his closest friend was against him, he still had to keep that truth, um, that direction that was right for him between him and God. Amen. So the next, the last part of this psalm, it's quite a short psalm, there's only 13 verses in this, but this, this last piece here says, but you, O Lord, be gracious to me and restore me to health so that I may repay them. By this I know that your fa you favour and delight in me because my enemy does not shout in triumph over me. As for me, you uphold me in my integrity and you set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from uh, everlasting to everlasting from this age to the next and forever amen and amen so be it that word again a simple word there integrity you uphold me in my integrity i love that i would suggest that integrity is absolutely everything in life when you can live your life that is uncompromising when you live your life that is purpose-filled and committed a hundred percent to him despite what's going on around you 
then you will not go too far wrong. There are so many scriptures that I haven't got time to, to read out to you about integrity, a lot of them found in the Proverbs actually. Um, incredible, incredible word. And it simply means this, if you, are, if you have integrity, it means that you are uncompromising and you adhere to moral and ethical principles, soundness of moral character, honesty, the state of being whole, um, and the entire or complete version of the true you. Um, people that have some integra um, integral traits or someone that's got humility, someone that is humble, someone that is good, authentic, honest, trustworthy. They give credit to others, uh, which is key. You don't find that in many people these days because they're so insecure in themselves that they find it hard to give credit where credit's due and to honour other people. That is so key. Um, they value your time and they don't argue rudely. That's just like a little snippet of, of some of the characteristics of someone that has integrity. You know, we can go through a lot and we often do, don't we, in life. We're in a broken world and we have ups and downs and we have good times and we have not so good times. Sometimes we're in the in the mountain tops and sometimes we're swooped down into those valleys. But let me tell you, if you um, clothe yourself with in integrity, then you will not go too far wrong. It says this in Proverbs, 7, uh, Proverbs 27, the righteous man who walks in integrity and lives life in accordance with godly beliefs, how blessed and happily and spiritually secure are his children after him who have example, have his example to follow. Um, I just want to leave it there and I hope you've got some more out of Psalm 41 and um, thank you for having me. God bless. Have a good week.